Hi, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. We are a year-round talk series bringing you the best creative voices across film, television, and theater. And today, we're so lucky to be joined by the fantastically talented Brian Michael Smith, who's currently starring in 911 Lone Star. And you know, you've recently been filming the second season, and obviously, you've had the opportunity now to to live and breathe in the character of Paul for a whole series. And I was interested in what's the evolution for you been in going back to shoot the second season and just having a much more in instinctual approach and knowing how he's going to respond to a lot of the different circumstances and situations that he's thrown into this season for you? Um, that is a great question. Uh, thank you for having me and uh, taking interest in uh, our show and uh, my character, Paul. Like I've, I've been having a great time uh, working on him and just and working on the show as a fan of the uh, original series. It's like been a dream come true to like join the, the 911 universe and to see what uh, I could bring to the uh, to the table. And, uh, you know, it was it was interesting when I first read Paul, like, you know, he was uh, described in the breakdown as a Midwest roughneck, uh, ink sleeves and whatnot. And I was like, oh, you know, I, I'm, as an actor, it's like, you know, I, OK, here's a challenge. There's things that, you know, I know I have these qualities. I am from the Midwest. And, you know, I can be a little rough on the edges. But how do I dig into what this idea is? But then as I read the script, there was so much that just like resonated with me in terms of like how he responded to things and um, the way that they set up um, his his backstory and the, I guess the reason why he decided to, uh, you know, go down to Austin. And I was like, well, that, that really bothers me. So I knew at the very beginning that this was going to be a character who he may express himself a little bit differently than, than I do, but a lot of uh, what motivates us at the core is the same. So I, I was like, okay, I can have some fun with this while, you know, being able to do all these very action oriented things, you know, which is something that, you know, I grew up watching a lot of action movies and, uh, and TV shows. So I'm like, I get to, you know, kind of come out and do that. So what was great about uh, season one was that Paul was uh, very close to the vest. Um, you know, he's a man of a very few words. And he's a highly observant, you know, so he'll, and a lot of that has to do with like this kind of personal safety. And a lot of that is just kind of, you know, how he rolls, which is the opposite of me. I'm very outgoing and, you know, I'll, I'll speak first before, you know, I, I think. So it was interesting sort of uh, translating that. And then uh, he was also very protective of himself um, as he was kind of feeling out what the experience in Austin was going to be and what the people he was going to work like was, was, were going to be like, because, uh, you know, his experience in Chicago you know, he transitioned on the job and it wasn't the most positive experience for him. So, you know, he came in, you know, wary, but, you know, looking forward to something new. And so those earlier episodes, you know, I liked watching him sort of feel everyone out and uh, slowly start to get more comfortable and open once he realized, you know, just how much of a, a family vibe uh, Owen was trying to create and how, you know, each individual was, was, uh, steady in themselves so you know he felt like no one's going to try to make me be something that I'm not and everyone is accepting of of everyone here um, and you know it's all about how we show up on the job and how we show up for each other and so he was able to get comfortable and like you know you start to see his uh, sense of humor start to you know come out as we like progress in more and more episodes you know and I, I love I love his sense of humor where it's like and if you're not really listening to him you don't catch that you know he's he's uh, dropping some some witty you know or some dry one liners so I'm having a lot of fun with that. And as we get into season two, we're seeing a lot more that he's way more open. He's a way more uh, comfortable. Um, and uh, you can see that the dynamics between him and the members of the firehouse, you know, have, have shifted and deepened in a lot of ways. That's been really fun to explore and has been interesting to see how the writers have adopted what they noticed from the cast and how we are interacting with them, how much they worked into the, uh, the script. Yeah. And with that point that you were making about how he's incredibly observational and he's really just kind of like watching everyone around him a lot and doesn't necessarily step forward as the first person to speak in a group situation, particularly, how does that make you think differently about the delivery of lines, just kind of knowing that when he does say something that it really means something for him to, to speak up? It gives me, you know, as an actor, um, a lot of internal work to do, which is fun, you know, like you, there's a lot of things you can do with dialogue and, you know, ideas you can come up with, you know, what you're going to say. But because Paul is observing, I get to a chance to really, um, really think, <laughs> really, and then like, you know, like um, come up with different ideas about how I feel about what's going on in a given situation. So even though I read the script and I know what's going to happen, what's point A and what's point B, I can come with a lot of different ways to get there in the meantime before I even open my mouth. So that's been a really fun, like creative experience to have. Yeah. And you were mentioning just now, obviously, the exciting challenge when you first came onto the show, a big part of that being that it's an action series and really growing up watching a, a lot of those types of movies. What are, what are the unique aspects that come with that in terms of what it requires from you 
as a performance, you know, obviously there's the physical aspect, but there's, there's usually a specific kind of tone and, and type of delivery and, and also a way that you have to think about your performance in the midst of an action sequence as well. So what have been the unique challenges that have come with that for you? Um, I think when I, when I approached the role, like I was very adamant about um, Paul's, how Paul would approach um, firefighting, how he would show up. And I felt like because he was challenged and because he faced a lot of discrimination, um, when, uh, when he was in Chicago, he probably really focused on being the best firefighter. So knowing the firefighter manual inside and out, knowing fire science and, you know, just being very uh, proficient um, uh, on the job and, and knowing, you know, things above and beyond just what his, uh, his specialty is. And so I wanted to make sure I brought that into, uh, into you know, the, the work that I was doing. So I really spent some time, like, you know, speaking with the fire tech, you know, um, going to firehouses, and, uh, you know, just watching as many YouTube videos and reading as much as I can about, you know, how do you work with the Halligan and when would you do a force? Engine? If we're jumping off the truck, even though it doesn't say anything about, you know, what we're supposed to grab, what would make sense for me to grab based on this kind of, um, this kind of, uh, you know, situation, whether it's medical or whatever, what gloves am I wearing right now? Like, am I going to be wearing the blue medical gloves or am I wearing the tactical gloves? And, you know, am I jumping out first or am I going, you know, so like a lot of the, um, the physicality I wanted to ground in reality just based on what I thought my character would be and just to ground me as an as an actor doing things that I hadn't really done before you know and uh, knowing who my character is and uh, how he works within a group dynamic has also shaped the way that you know I would you know choose to perform a scene you know if I know that he's a thinker he's going to jump out and assess as opposed to a TK character who's going to just run straight in and get the instructions later you know Paul's like wait a minute let's hang back I'm gonna sit back here I'm gonna you know you know, figure things out. So learning how to incorporate those kinds of um, character uh, things and uh, uh, professional uh, based choices into my character and my, into my performance has been, you know, an interesting challenge and, uh, and uh, um, you know, something that, that I've enjoyed doing. One of the things that's so fascinating about that group dynamic that you were talking about as well, when they're thrust into so many of these situations is watching and observing in, in these scenes, how they interact with each other and the amount that goes unsaid because of the intrinsic level of trust that they have with each other. And, you know, do you have conversations at any point where it's like, Hey, like, I actually feel like they wouldn't need to say this out loud. Like they would just know. And how do you figure out what are the things that they really need to say to each other? And what are all of the silent cues that they're sharing amongst each other as they step into something? What, what, what's been great about the production, uh, team, uh, the, the writers and the directors that we work with, some really great writers, is that they um, allow us to sort of take the lead in that. So like, you know, to still write the scripts, we'll, we'll go and then all the actors, I love them, they show up prepared. So it's not like we don't know what we're going to say, what we're going to do, but uh, we'll get to rehearsal. And in that rehearsal, if, you know, something's not quite vibing or if, you know, something comes out in just the, the way that somebody does something, then, you know, I love that, you um, there's a, a real collaborative spirit with the directors and with the, the writers. Cause you know, half, most of the time the writers are like on a set with us, you know, if they, you know, uh, were the lead on that episode and, you know, if something comes up, like, Oh, keep that, keep that. Or they say, Oh no, I really want you to hit this specific line. Um, and we'll work. The directors are willing to work with us on like, you know, helping us justify something if we don't feel like, well, I mean, we, I don't think I need to say that. So it's great that the door is open for us to have those conversations like on the day. And if I get a script um, before we even go uh, shoot, I can look at it and I can, uh, you know, get in touch with um, one of the, the lead writers or even with uh, Tim, the showrunner and say, I got some, um, some questions about, you know, this, this bit of dialogue here or this situation here that, you know, maybe I can, I can clarify or like, you know, I have a suggestion about, you know, what I think we're going with the character, but what's been really um, exciting about this show is the amount of ownership we've been given, you know, of the characters, you know, from, from like very early on, you know, I feel like after we kind of banged out those first two episodes and people kind of really settled into who they were as the character, um, they really gave us that creative license. And it was also, you know, interesting about the, the 9 -1 universe is, you know, you don't know everything and like mm -hmm. about your character or about like what's going to happen. So like, you know, uh, we could get a script, we can be working with a certain idea or like backstory in our mind, and, uh, you know, I get to season two and I got some information about my family that I didn't have before. And like, well, I better uh, adapt this into what I'm about to do, you know. So there's that element as well where, you know, they really let you know as much as as like maybe they want you to know or as, you know, maybe they've even 
kind of written because they 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 want to allow a, the uh, universe and what the characters do to expand. So there's a lot that's left unsaid that can either be filled by us as the actors or you know through creative decisions on set. With that creative autonomy that the writers and and the showrunning team give you with him, what are some of the elements of who Paul is fundamentally at his core that you feel you really got the opportunity to craft into him through that collaboration? I feel like a lot of that, uh, you know, his his approach to um, how he does his thing, like when he's doing the observation, like, the, you know, they, they wrote the script, he does a thing. So I got a chance to sort of come up with what that would look like. Um, mm-hmm. So that was that was fun. And uh, even how he navigates conversations around his uh, gender history and experience, especially mm-hmm. in uh, episode 105 um, mm-hmm. and even in the pilot, like uh, there was a way that the the scene between him and uh, Captain Strand in the bathroom um, where, you know, he's talking about his, uh, his struggles with acne and, um, you know, uh, Captain Strand shares his acne routine. So mm-hmm. some of the dialogue that was written was something that I felt given Paul's a previous experience that was, you know, kind of discriminatory and like very prejudiced, he would be very protective and private about, you know, kind of elements of, of, uh, of, of things that he felt like vulnerable about, so like with acne, you know, it was based on medication, like he wouldn't just be volunteering information out loud in a relatively, you know, private space. So I was able to have that conversation with the, uh, the creative team. And, you know, we were able to change that dialogue to something that made way more sense and was and still in line with who, you know, Paul is as a character. He is a close to the best kind of guy. And this is like day two. And like, you know, he's not just throwing his information on day two. And uh, similar uh, to uh, how he navigated the conversation with uh, TK and uh, Mateo in uh, episode 105 in the, in the uh, gym when he was talking about uh, dating and his dating experience, you know, first uh, pass with the script you know, he was, again, just volunteering information that it's like, well, given who Paul is in the experience, I feel like um, the guys hadn't earned that amount of openness from him yet. Mm-hmm. So they rewrote it in a way that, you know, TK was open and vulnerable and shared something. Mm-hmm. And that allowed Paul to feel like, okay, I can trust you. You trust me. I can trust you. And it showed a, the growth of that, their dynamic, like right there on screen. It was like a great, you know, transition point for all of them, like right there, you know, on, on the page, which I thought was really, really cool. So yeah, I feel like how he approaches uh, and responds to danger, how he supports his team, and then, you know, how he navigates his own identity, you know, um, his strengths and his and what he, you know, felt like were liabilities at first and now realize are his assets, how he navigates those conversations, you know, yeah. something I've been able to bring to the table. That's so fantastic. It's also so interesting with shows like this, the number of extraneous characters that you get the opportunity to interact with and and have scenes with and you know really from all walks of life and and it's so striking with Paul as well that you know you see the different ways that he responds to people and he really is very good at like reading people's energy um like in episode 105 where it's like he knows that like she needs humor like Mm -hmm. she needs to laugh to like not think about what she's going through and feeling stressed and feeling panicked but that's not the same thing that he gives to every person along the way so how do you work with um all of the different actors that are coming in and these supporting in these guest roles and really look at how they're conveying that character that may only be there for a few lines to then think in in return like how Paul is going to read their energy and respond and and kind of like feed into whatever it is that that character needs from him. I feel like I took a page from the first responders book because I feel like that's how first responders you know that's that's kind of that's part of the job where you you come into a situation and you need to know like where is this person at? So what's great about the show is it sets it up to, to let me do that. Like I can read on the script and have an idea of what is going to transpire, mm-hmm. but I have no idea what that artist is going to do with it and what energy they're going to, to bring to it. And so that in, in time, like I just get to truthfully respond in the, in the, uh, in the moment, which is, which is great. Um, unless there's something in the script that I feel like I want to have a specific reaction to, or I want to have a specific way of, of uh, being, you know, if I want to put that, you know, this kind of emergency makes me feel this way. So maybe Paul's going to come that way. And then that's how I'm going to react to the energy that the, uh, the actors bring. But what's been great about this show is that all of the guest stars have brought it, you know what I mean? So nobody shows up and like phones it in. So they really give us a lot to work with and a lot of truth to, to respond to. So, um, when I do approach an emergency, uh, I have like, I feel like very similar to what the real experience is. You get the call and it says like, you know, medical emergency, man down and you show up and then whatever's, then you have to respond to what's going on there and what state is the person in. So I feel like that's what I do with the script. I read as much of, of, of enough of, to get an overview, to know kind of what I'm supposed to be doing. And then I, I like leave it alone. 
and then I just show up on the day and see like, well, what is what is coming out of this person? What, what's going to happen? And uh, I really like that they give, you know, each person and each situation a, a different flavor so that we always have something new to respond to. Mm-hmm. And with first responder shows, you know, there's there's always like an emotional aspect and characters really, you know, dealing with things that bring in a lot of deeper layers, but there's often not, you know, it's not like a whole episode carved around this big arc that's going to happen. You might only have a few scenes to really kind of pull that in. And at the same time, you're still fitting that into what the overall tone of the show is and the fact that it is a little bit larger than life. Mm-hmm. So how do you uniquely approach a lot of the more emotional scenes with Paul? Um... I feel like it, it depends on which, uh, like what is the scene about? Um, like when we deal with in uh, season two, we're gonna deal with a loss and they do give us a moment, uh, like a montage where, you know, you kind of see how each character is gonna kind of deal with that loss in their own way. Um, and so for me, I would just kind of like brought as much truth from my experience as uh, Brian on the show with the particular person into uh, Paul and that person and that character, you know, within the firehouse and uh, mute, like fuse those two together. You know what I mean? So it's like I had I felt like what I was experiencing was, you know, as close to reality as as I needed to kind of feel the way that I would feel about that person. And then, uh, you know, gave myself space in, in my trailer and throughout the day to sort of like, you know, let my imagination get me to the place that I needed to to be, you know, to kind of be there. And then balancing it out by like dropping it you know like I have to I can't for me when I perform like things like that I don't like to be upset and I don't like to be uncomfortable uh and like vulnerable in in that way so I have to let myself check out so you know you know prime the pump you know and use my imagination to get me there and and you know go there and rehearse that and then drop it you know when I don't need it and then when we get to the actual like filming of it you know do what I need to do to, to get there go there And then, you know, go back to, you know, joking and talking with my castmates. Or if I feel like I'm having a hard time, you know, dropping in there and getting there and staying there, then it's like, let me just go to a quiet space and just let myself have that space and, uh, and, uh, you know, kind of get where I need to go. Yeah. With going back for the second season, did you find that the types of conversations or, you know, if you had rehearsals before scenes that 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 process really looked the same this season or did anything kind of shift and evolve based on everybody on the creative team just knowing exactly how you all work best together at this point I think they shifted um honestly because the production is 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 a lot different this year because Mm -hmm. COVID. you know so you know we have uh a different way of rehearsing because you can't have as many people on set Mm -hmm. you know at, at a certain time you know so they got things divided up into zones so the rehearsal process is just a little different. And, you know, in terms of how we speak to each other and about things and the amount of ownership, I definitely feel like there's more ownership. So I feel like we have a shorthand with each other now about mm-hmm. what's going to happen and seeing how we're going to shoot it. But then also a lot of that is kind of shaped around how we can shoot it based on, yeah. you know, the new protocols. Yeah. Has that also really changed the dynamic and, and the way that you're having conversations with directors? Because, you know, it used to be you would finish filming a scene and a director would come and you could have a very close conversation. And now it's like, the closest they can get is all the way over here as you're mm-hmm. trying to sometimes have a very intimate conversation about character. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like uh, the, the it's like the ballet has changed a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it went from being like a ballet to like hip hop and like now you kind of, we're still doing the dance, but it's like, you gotta you gotta do things a little bit differently. So I gotta track, you know, the director down and like, we gotta come over here, and, you know, it's like, uh, uh, you gotta be a little more patient because they're trying to like tell you something. It's like, what? Because they have the mask and the face shield on, you know? So you you, just, <laughs> you have to kind of figure out, like, oh, you know, so and so and the director try to have a private conversation. So let me give them twelve to tw- you know feet as opposed to just the six, you know, or and, and things like that. So it's been interesting trying to like navigate literally just the physical differences because of uh, of the COVID protocols. Yeah. And how has that even impacted a lot of the mechanisms within a scene? Because like you were saying, you can only have so many people on set together, so many people as close. And, you know, a lot of what the show did in season one that was so great were a lot of these really big scenes where they're going into situations with a lot of people. And, mm-hmm. and I imagine that there's less opportunity to do anything like that. So how has that really shifted some of the dynamic and some of the situations that they're stepping into with those protocols in mind? I think they've been really smart in the prep for the scenes mm-hmm. that we want to do with larger amounts of people. Um, being outside <laughs> and then the scene where uh you know we're doing emergencies that happen to be indoors is you know they just like, all right we'll have less 
people in here and incorporating mass into the reality of the world. So, you know, it feels safe because, you know, maybe four or five principles don't have masks on, but then a lot of the background and, you know, the atmosphere of people, they still have their masks on because the situation calls for, you know, because you're in at an indoor dining situation and, you know, you need to have your mask on if you're not eating kind of thing. So they've been really smart about making it as natural and safe as possible, which I appreciate for sure. Yeah. And you were mentioning a little bit about Paul's relationship with Rob Lowe and Ronan Rubenstein's characters who, you know, are kind of like the main leaders at this fire station for for this season how do you feel that the three of you really had an opportunity to just continue evolving that relationship particularly as paul starts to trust the two of them a lot more and feels a little bit more comfortable opening up to them well what's interesting is um you know we have captain strand and you have a tk for sure but the other uh sen- senior leader is is judd and so what's been interesting in season two is uh you know uh because captain strand is you know he's coming out of new york and, uh, you know, uh, Judd is one of the only characters from the original Firehouse thing. Mm-hmm. So he's been like the, the one that, you know, Captain Strand leans on a lot. Yeah. And so in this season, you definitely see that dynamic a lot more where Judd is actually leading on calls. And also um, we're doing more calls where not everybody from, you know, the fire mm-hmm. station is responding to the same calls, which is more, you know, in line with reality. So we've been doing more scenes where it's like maybe it's, you know, Judd and I and um, Marjan and Mateo, or maybe it's TK and I and, and Captain Strand. So it's been interesting watching the dynamics of how we work as units. You know, so we, we went from working as like a full, you know, like a battalion to like, you know, so now this unit's gonna come over here. This unit, and then like seeing the dynamic play out there when not everyone is there, you know what I mean? So that's mm-hmm. been like something that's been really interesting when uh, you have a call with just four of us as opposed to, you know, all, you know, nine, you know what I mean? And so it's been uh, it's been great because it gives the opportunity for other people who may not have been uh, more in the direct action of a scene to have a chance to sort of step up and do you know more of the action or have someone who wasn't necessarily like calling out you know shots or directives you know give have an opportunity to give out shots and directives and then you as an actor get to choose like how do you respond to this character's directives mm-hmm. compared to this character's directives and you know. Uh, you know, who do, who do you respond to more like a, a brother? Who do you respond to more like a, a, a peer? Who do you respond to more like, you know, a, a general? You know what I mean? And then like throwing that around and seeing what's going on. So it's been cool to, to play with those dynamics a lot. And working on the, the show overall was the first time that you were taking on a series regular role in, in this type of capacity. How did that really cause you to shift and think about the way that you worked differently? You know, you've talked about it a little bit in terms of, of backstory and how that can really pivot, but even just the way that you build out character arcs and, and you never get to settle with a character, you're constantly evolving them in a different way. I was, I mean, it had been on my vision board for years to be a series regular on a TV show for that specific reason. Mm-hmm. You know, I um, I got trained and a lot of my early experience was in theater. And something I love about theater is that ability to like take a character on a journey over an arc. But what I like about television is you get to take that character over a journey over an arc that, you know, continues to evolve, you know, season after season. And like, there's a, there's change, you know what I mean? So you don't get locked into just one script. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I really want to do that. Um, but to prepare myself for that, there's a level of physical exertion mm-hmm. and that I, you know, needed to really get myself together for. So that was like one of the biggest adaptions um, that I had to make. I had to change my approach to how I'm going to um, modulate my energy because, you know, it's like 14 hour days and I'm working pretty much, you know, six to seven days a week doing like very physical uh, stuff. So in addition to the uh, internal work and, you know, the, the creative work and the choices and, and things like that, so I had to deal with like being tired while I'm doing it too, you know what I mean? So that's been interesting uh, and like um, something that I had to adapt to. So, you know, I've, you see why a lot of these actors like are in shape, it's not just because you want to be like pretty on TV, it's because like, you need you need to be, you know, a lot of the tools that we use, like the actual like firefighter tools. And I remember uh, when I was getting ready for um, for uh, the, the first season to start, I had like a little uh, break in between. I felt like I was getting in pretty good shape because I was working on uh, the L word. Um, and I went from like kind of being on like a, a break and like getting to know Los Angeles and trying all the food to like, oh, I got to get in shape because you know, there's a nudity clause in this L word contract. Now I am not prepared for that. So I was like, I, got, I felt like I got in pretty good shape. It was like LA Fitness, you know, I was, I, was, I was feeling pretty good. And then I went to my first firefighter training 
And, uh, I, I, and I was feeling like feeling pretty great. And like the firefighter like gave me like a hose pack and he's carrying, he's like talking, yeah, you know, stuff like he's doing this thing. And he just hands it to me. And I'm like, Poof. oh, oh, these, these are gym muscles. These are not going to do it for me. I need to really go to, I need to see a trainer. I need to get like some functional fitness. So I had like change everything up. So I work on like muscle endurance and like functional fitness to be able to like hold a hose out like this, you know, for an extended period of time and like to hold a hose pack and jump off the truck or repeatedly take after take, you know? So adapting to that, getting myself uh, in a place where I can be physical while looking like I know what I'm doing as a firefighter mm -hmm. and, you know, maintaining the character was like a lot, but I feel like, uh, you know, <laughs> that's a great, another good thing about being like a series regular as opposed to like guest star. I don't have just one episode to like get it together. I had a few to like really, you know, lock it in and, and dial it in. You know what I mean? So I, I feel really good about that. You got to really make it count after all the yeah. work. <laughs> mm -hmm. After all the work, you know, for sure. And you were just mentioning your theater training. And I know that you've also specifically studied the Meisner technique and mentioned mm -hmm. how, you know, for you, there's like a shift in the dynamic and you can, even without knowing, you know, when you're working against another actor that studied that specific technique, mm -hmm. what are the differences that you feel like you're able to kind of like pull into a performance or the way that you work on scenes when you know that it's another actor that studied in the same way as you? Um, there's a openness to improv improvisation when I'm working with somebody who you know kind of has a similar background whether they're like they don't have to be like strict Meisner or whatever but somebody who kind of has that um in their like actor DNA is is a little more open to um a kind of improvisation that some other actors you know based on their approach it's just like that's not how they're gonna it's not how they jam they 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 kind of had it had their performance sort of scored out. They know what's going on, and they're going to respond, you know, as truthfully as possible in the moment. But they may not get what I'm throwing out in terms of what I'm giving in a in a scene, like that's a uh, an offering, you know. Whereas when I work with somebody else who kind of has a Meisner esque background, there's like, oh, there's a there's a repartee in those kind of offerings. So, okay, good. Okay, so all right, you know. So it's just it's just a different like way of playing, almost like with like music, you know, like it's like somebody who is classically trained or somebody who's like a jazz musician. And, you know, so like, I know, like I can still play, I can play with either one, you know what I mean? And same thing with the, a classic musician you probably play with a jazz musician, but you know, sometimes it's just like, oh, I didn't know that's what we were doing. So, okay, you know, yeah. but when you got somebody else who's also, you know, that got that jazz bass, it's like, Doo -doo -doo, you know, so it, it makes uh, the day go a little bit uh, differently or makes the scene go differently, you know? And then you, as an actor, like you know how to adapt. Like I, you know, I think what's great about, um, the training that I received that was kind of a Meisner base was that I don't have to be dependent on what the other person is doing to have a truthful, authentic, you know, performance experience, you know, but if they are, you know, giving me something that I can work with, great. And if they're not, great. I still, you know, I'll still find something to work with. Well, it's been such a pleasure talking to you this afternoon. Thank you so, so much, Brian. Yeah, thank you. I love these questions. Like, I got to talk about the work, baby. It was great. <laughs>